Hello and welcome back to Die Rolling. I'm the ever excitable Adam and today I'm going to attempt to escape the Dark Castle yet again. And this time around we're coming across the Blight of the Plague Lord, uh, which sounds really lovely, but it's not. So I'm going to explain um, what new mechanics the Blight of the Plague Lord brings. This is the third expansion for Escape the Dark Castle. Um, we've got three new characters that are included in this game. You've got the Shepherd, the Fletcher, and the Butcher. Now, what's interesting about these particular characters is uh, on their double uh, dice, on their double side, there's normally two of the same icon and a shield, but this time around, they actually have one of a different, uh, different types there. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so they're a bit more balanced, I guess. Uh, the cubes you do not get in the game. I'm using those for the purposes of filming this so you have a nice physical representation exactly how much health these guys have got left. Uh, there's some new items that are in this deck as well as Plague. Now Plague is the biggest uh, change in this particular expansion uh, and you're going to see me adding on Plague cubes onto the characters. Now how this works is you basically have uh, levels of plague. So for every five cubes you have, you are going to increase your plague level by one. Uh, when you have a plague level of one, you're going to take one hit point damage straight away. When you have a plague level of two, you're going to take one hit point straight away. Anything above level two, you're going to be taking away two health every time you get an additional level on there. And as you can see, as time goes on, it gets pretty bad. Um, so I'm using these cubes. Uh, the yellow ones are going to represent how many uh, how many groups of five uh, plague cubes I have on there. So I can keep a track of exactly how plague my characters are. Now, how do you get plague? Well, there's a few ways you get plague. Um, one way is by taking damage from uh, plague carriers. So these are uh, enemies which will have a particular little kind of black stain against them. Um, you'll also have to roll the plague dice at particular points. So the plague dice here, um, you'll roll it and whatever the number is on here is how many plague cubes you're going to take. Uh, now also, if you are taking an item from a plague carrier, you're going to have to roll the plague dice. Uh, it's as simple as that. It's just not a very nice, uh, nice, nice way to get plague, I guess. Um, and that includes if one of these guys has plague and the other one doesn't, if they're taking items between themselves, they're going to get plague. It's, uh, it is, there's no way they can get out of this without taking at least one plague, I believe. Um, is there anything else I have to think about? I don't think so. Let's just crack on with the offset. The, uh, the very, uh, very cool intro as they always do here. In the most confined, twisting passageways, in the vaulted eaves of the highest towers, in the fetid air drawn sharply into your panicked lungs, there will you find his creation. For he is the Plague Lord, emanator of an all-encompassing evil, a monstrous mass of weeping pustules. It would be his most perverse pleasure to watch as you slowly succumb to the agonizing torment of the Plague. So we've got the Shepherd and the Fletcher. They've been incarcerated in the titular Dark Castle. And let's see how we get on. So our first card, as always, is exactly the same. After years of incarceration in the depths of the Dark Castle, you finally break free of your cell. In a small stone room adjoining the cell box stands an old wooden chest. The lock is open. Draw an item card per player now. Um, so let's see what we get. So for the shepherd, well, we're going to draw both of them and they get to choose the ha what they're going to have. So um, we're going to give the shepherd the cudgel because I'll be honest, the shepherd kind of looks like Ripley from Aliens. So I kind of feel that she'd have the weapon. And liquid luck is good because we can discard to reroll our character dice. Uh, the warped cudgel, once per round of combat, when you roll might, you may roll again and choose which of the two results to apply. Well, that's pretty handy. You hear footsteps approaching. You must not linger here. You make for the exit, slipping away and disappearing into the darkness. Turn the first chapter card now. And as far as I'm aware, I've got these in the order that they, they come in. When you play these games, you can basically shuffle up these 15 cards and go in any order to face the boss. Or you can do them in the order they are printed. And it just has uh, numbers right here, which tells you what number uh, this is. So this is one and all the bottom you have 15. 
and the boss at the end. And you can, of course, just chuck all this stuff in together and uh, all the expansions and just see what comes out, which sounds like it'd be really fun. Uh, this little mark down here means this. These guys are plague carriers. So, a welcome glow leads you down a long twisting passage, right into the jaws of a trap. By the dying light of their shimmering lanterns, the skin of these cunning night watchmen glistens with decay. As a group, choose an option. We can flee, you outpace your, the watchman and get away, but a thrown spear slices up in your side. You lose one hit point and must roll for plague, or we can begin combat. We're gonna fight for combat. Uh, now, what I should be doing is saying which of my two characters are going, uh, are drawing this card, because when it refers to you, it refers to the person who drew the card. So uh, we've got one chapter dice, which is wisdom, and then we're rolling two dice because we have two characters. So we have one of everything. Right, so let's go. Well, we've done it straight away. So the Fletcher gets a fist and a cunning, and the Shepherd gets a wisdom and a cunning. So we have managed to tackle these guys in one go. Let's open this up and see what we find there. So uh, we could get the Effervescent Evasion when you would take damage discard to avoid that damage. Um, that's a pretty good item, but if I do pick that up, I am going to take Plague. Uh, do you know what? We're going to just we're just going to go for it. So the Shepherd is going to grab that. She rolls the Plague dice and she gets her first two Plague cubes. Uh, right, so the Fletch is going to go next. This passage passage even this passage ends at a low sewer grate spewing dark odious water with the sound of footsteps rapidly approaching you have no choice but to crawl inside the network of narrow tunnels beyond as a group nominate a player to crawl in first and navigate to succeed they must roll three cunning in five attempts after each attempt if the total has not been reached all other players must try to roll wisdom in one attempt and any who fail lose one hit point as they begin to succumb to claustrophobia when the turtles reach or after five attempts, the exit is found and all players emerge. So we're going to start with the Fletcher. Fletcher's going to uh, try the cunning here. So we've got to get three cunning in five attempts. Okay, so that's one. Now we have to do wisdom. Yep, we've got a wisdom. So our second attempt, two. And once again, another wisdom. And finally, oh, I've got to roll that again because it went out. Three, we've got through, and does Shepherd? Shepherd also gets through with no issue. So they merge out of the other side of the sewer grate, and they're feeling fine. So the Fletcher still leading the way. Oh, and what do we have? The air fills with the sound of agitated chittering as the floor ahead becomes a dark, writhing mass of rats. They surge forward as one yellow toothed jaws snapping. There seems no end to them. Begin combat. So uh, the first time the rat swarm is defeated before drawing an item card, roll a chapter die. If the result is cunning, more rats emerge. You must restart combat and defeat them a second time. So uh, they have one cunning and once again, the same as before. So let's see if we can take these guys out. Well, we are doing pretty well. We've we've killed them. So those the first initial lot are dead. So we roll a dice. And it's cunning, so they are back. Once again, I'm rolling ridiculous here. So restarting combat again. And this time we didn't manage to, um, to get rid of all of them. Um, so we're going to discard this to re-roll your character die, applying only the second result. So hopefully get a fist. But we didn't, but we did get a shield. So... Uh, between them, they manage to use their cunning wisdom to avoid the rats. The rats attack, but it's blocked by the shield. So we're going back in for another attempt. We need a fist, need some might, and the Fletcher got a fist there, which beats the rats. And this time around, we see here. Oh, okay. So a rotten shield. It's armor. Whenever you take damage, you reduce the amount by one, down to a minimum of one. And the Fletcher's going to grab that, which means she has to roll the plague dice. And she gets, I think that's two. Um, so she gets two plague for that. But she does have a handy rotten shield to help. I feel like my guys are pretty tooled up at the moment. Let's see how they get on. From across a body of dark icy water, a hooded boatman slowly steers his craft towards you. In a croaky voice, he offers safe passage to the other side. You notice his hands are covered with oozing pustules. Each player must Choose one option. Cross by boat, roll for plague. Swim across. Each player attempting to swim must try to roll a double in one attempt. 
And if you fail, you flounder, you lose a hit point, you have to keep trying again. Uh, and you could lose a total of three hit points this way. Do you know what? Um, the shepherd is going to trust this guy and go in the boat. And she gets two plague for the trouble. And the Fletcher is going to join in as well. And also gets two plague for the trouble of that. So they're both very close to uh, contracting the first level of this plague. Uh, the shepherd's going to go first this time. Ooh. You hear the rapid clicking sound of claw against stone. As a creature beyond description scuttles out of the darkness, its movement is frighteningly quick, its snapping jaws laden with long, needle-sharp teeth. As a group, choose one option, then begin combat. We can rush it and keep it pinned. It'll do two damage every time it hits, um, but we only have to do two, three chapter dice, or we can surround and counterattack. does less damage, but it's going to take us longer to kill it. Um... Do you know what? I'm going to surround and counterattack. So, because I feel like I'm doing all right at the moment. So we've got a might, a wisdom, and a cunning, and a wisdom. So let's see if my guys can beat it. Okay, so the Fletcher gets a fist and an eye. Um, the shepherd got the warp cudgel here, so he she can re-roll this again. And she got a wisdom. So. Um, she's going to keep the wisdom, so we're going to get rid of these top three here. Now, uh, the Fletcher doesn't take any damage because the Fletcher has a shield, but the Shepherd takes a single damage, and as she takes one damage, she now has five Plague Cubes. So, she takes a single damage again because of the Plague slowly eating away at her, and we begin combat again. This time, the Shepherd is actually going to rest this time, which means she gets a hit point back. The Fletcher is attacking, and the Fletcher got uh, a cunning so she takes uh, one damage from the uh, from the attack and then an additional damage because she now has plague as well uh, so we're just both going to go in and try and kill this guy now and uh, yep we have done it we got the wisdom there so with a little bit of wisdom they managed to kill this creature and they find a tattered knapsack. Now, this is a special item. It comes in this one. Um, basically, this enables you to carry up to four items. So, uh, you know what? The Fletch is going to grab that. And she gets two plague for her trouble. So, she can have a total of three more items uh, here. Let's see what's next. So, uh, Shepherd, sorry, should be going first. You enter a long chamber piled high with broken, rotting barrels. A dumping ground for discarding empties. Suddenly, you hear the clunking sound of a hatch opening overhead, and a large barrel thunders down a ramp towards you. You can only raise your arms to shield yourself as it smashes against you. You lose two hit points. After being helped to your feet, you notice something partly covered by the new debris. Perhaps this barrel was not completely empty. So, two new items. Partially rotten apple and the golden axe. The golden axe is a Kickstarter kind of exclusive. It comes with its own dice. Um... And I rarely manage to uh, to use this properly. Um, so, of course, this is a two-handed weapon. So, um, ah, this does make things a little more difficult now. Okay, we're going to have to do a bit of trading here. Oh, we don't want to trade, though, because it means we're going to have to be rolling play dice, uh, I believe. Oh, no, it doesn't affect them if they're all affected. Okay, so let's do a bit of trading here. So we're going to put the golden axe into the knapsack. She's going to have the partly, partially rotten apple. She's going to swap um, the, the food first for the potion. Uh, the shepherd's going to eat the food, which gives her one hit point back. Then she's going to pass over the shield over there, and she's going to equip herself with the Golden Axe. Okay, so uh, the Fletcher feels really brave now, so she's going to go forward first. You've been cornered by a masked mob. They wave weapons and burning torches in the air, chanting, Die, Plaguers, die! Roll a chapter die in front of each player that represent to represent the vigilante attacking them. However, the mob is targeting carriers, players with more than five plague or less than half of their starting hit points should roll two chapter dice instead, begin combat. Well, um, we've got five plague each. 
So it's two chapter dice each. So this is the shepherd and the Fletcher. Okay, so the shepherd first. I've uh, got a, um, a cunning. Uh, so she takes a single damage from that. And then the Fletcher. I honestly do not believe this rolls anything other than that. The nice thing is I did manage to take them out, no problem. Uh, however, this means I lose a hit point and the axe is gone. I always get excited when I see the axe and then it goes away straight away. So uh, the Fletcher can help the Shepherd um, attack now. And um, Shepherd takes out one of these. One damage happens to the Fletcher though. Oh, both take a damage. And this time we do it, so. Some liquid luck, discard to reroll your character die, applying only the second result. So the Fletcher will take that. We're gonna get the uh, Effervescent Evasion Potion out as well. So you have these two things here. And um, the Shepherd is gonna lead the way this time. A woman in a strange mask slips out of the darkness ahead, bringing with her a cloud of sweet smelling incense. She speaks in beguiling riddles, but to do, do she offers aid to those in need for a price. Each player may choose one option. Discard any item to either heal up to five plague or draw two item cards. Or negotiate, try to roll a double in one attempt. Um, okay, so I've got a two and six chance of getting a double. Shepard's going to try to negotiate and fails. Her words fall on deaf ears. You get nothing. And um, she's going to get rid of the, uh, the liquid luck to draw two item cards. Okay, she's going to eat the food straight away to recover a health. Okay, so let's uh, go to the next one. Uh, the Fletcher's leading the way. Oh, his mind may be simple, but the club this plague-ridden thug drags behind him looks highly capable. His slurred words are equally chilling. Clean, fetch a clean flesh for master. Combat special, all players may fight as normal, but each round the high thug only attacks the player with the least plague, which is going to be the shepherd. If there's a tie, he attacks a tied player with the most hit points. If there's still a tie, he attacks all tied players. So, you have got two fists. And wisdom and a cunning. Let's do this. Okay, so the shepherd got a fist and a wisdom, and the Fletcher got a wisdom. Uh, she is going to use this uh, effervescent potion to ignore the damage she would have taken, which would have been two. We get rid of this and this, and we're blocked from any damage from this guy. So we're going to attack again. Okay, this time the Fletcher has got um, a Cunning and a Fist, which is enough to kill. The Cunning and the Might is enough to kill there. So uh, we've killed this guy. And what item do we find? Plague. You begin to feel weak and feverish. You notice a dark abscess forming on your wrist. There is a sharp pain in your abdomen and you fall forward, coughing up thick black bile. So the Shepherd's going to have that. Uh, we've got to roll the Plague dice. She gets three Plague. Um, the Fletcher is going first now. Clouds of sweet-smelling incest hang in the air of this chamber, where several shadowy figures are carefully inspecting a shrouded corpse. Near the door is a wooden rack holding several items. As a group, choose one option. Move on. You just turn the next chapter card. Steal one player must roll two cunning in three attempts. Um, we could draw two item cards. We're going to do that. We're going to try and do that. So the Fletcher is the most cunning, so she needs to do this in three attempts. So that's one. She needs one more. We did it. So we draw two cards. Cracked Axe and Liquid Luck. Oh, the Cracked Axe is really handy. So she's going to put uh, this and this into 
there and she's going to grab out her two-handed axe. Perfect. So uh, the Fletcher with her axe is going first and we find a bear. This passage descends into a large cave with an overpowering stench of rotten flesh. You hear something shuffling in the darkness and quicken your step only to come face to face with a monstrous plague riddled bear. It lets out a ferocious roar and rears up to strike. You must try to roll might or a double in one attempt. We failed. Um, Fairly, the bear rips open your shoulder. You lose one hit point and must roll for plague. Three, which is enough to get us to the next level of plague. So um, we lose another hit point because of that. And we begin combat. So it's a cunning bear. He's got two, two eyes for cunning. And then we've got two dice, which is another cut. He's very cunning and he's a little wise. So uh, let's see how we get on. We've got the cracked axe. Um, let's roll for the Fletcher first. So the Fletcher goes in for attack. Two wisdom there. So they're gone. And the Shepherd rolls a fist and a wisdom. So we get rid of the wisdom. Uh, two damage comes through to the, uh, to the Fletcher. Actually, do you know the Fletcher is going to sit out of this one? And the shepherd is going to attack. Oh, and we also took a damage, so we take a plague each. Oh, just for the Fletcher, sorry. So uh, the shepherd rests up. The shepherd, um, unfortunately, misses. Uh, takes one damage because the rotten shield protects them. And she takes one plague. Uh, the Fletcher is going to again rest. Shepherd going in. Fist this time, we get to use the warp cudgel to roll that again. And we got, we're defended at least from this attack. We're looking for cunning. Um, we're going to rest once more with the um, the shepherd, uh, with the Fletcher. Shepherd comes in, it's a fist. We can re-roll again because the cudgel is a fist again. So she takes one damage. She's now at the second level of plague, which means she takes an additional damage. Uh, everyone's going in for this last attack now. Oof. The shepherd got a fist, so we can re-roll that. A fist again. Oh, they're not doing very well this time. So we're going to be taking two damage over here. And one plague. One damage over here. And one plague. And we've done it now. So um, well done to the Fletcher. He managed to figure that out. And there's a partially rotten apple. Is it worth rolling for plague just to get one hit point back? Do you know what? I don't think it is at this point. So we're going to get rid of that apple. We don't want it. So uh, the flex is going first. Oof. In this long forgotten cell block, row upon row of rotting plague victims reach out with decayed hands, baying with their own fury as their mutation takes hold. Did I through the gauntlet, each player in turn must roll their character die along with three chapter die. After rolling for each chapter die they rolled, which matches their character die, a player must roll for plague. Urgh. Okay, so Shepard's going to take the first uh, run at this. First attempt. That's fine. Second attempt. That's fine. Oh, wait, sorry, I should have... Their character die along with three chapter do Sorry, I should have rolled three at the same time. Sorry, right, here we go, try again. Oh, and we got one match, so we have to roll the plague dice. Three plague. And then we have the Fletcher doing the same. And the Fletcher gets through unscathed. Okay, so uh, the Shepherd is going first. And oof, after leading onward for some time, you pause to peer into the ever-growing darkness ahead. A foul smell reaches you as something cold and slimy begins to tease the back of your neck. As a group, choose one option. You can struggle free and all make good your escape, but some of the filth seeps into your wound. You lose one hit point and must roll for plague. Or we can begin combat. I'm going to fight this guy because, you know what, I'm not going to flee. Okay, he's cunning. And a bit wise. So let's have a go. Okay, so the Fletcher 
gets rid of these, and the Shepherd gets rid of that. There's an Elixir of Insight, but we would get have to roll for Plague if we picked it up, so we're going to leave that where it is. Uh, the Fletcher next. Here, three slippery stepping stones lead out over a wide plague-infested cesspool. It would take great balance and skill to leap between the stones and reach the other side. The bubbling waters contain disturbing reminders of those who have falled, failed here before. One at a time, each player must roll their character die along with a chapter die four times. Oh, that's what I was just doing. Uh, four times. Each time a player's character die does not match the chapter die they roll, they slip into the bog and gain one plague. So I basically have to roll this four times and get get it to match. If I don't um, if I don't match, I gain one plague for every time I fail. So the shepherd fails on the very first attempt, which means we take one plague, which means we're on level three now, which means we take two damage. Our second attempt. Our third attempt. We sat, we did that one, that's no problem. And then our fourth attempt. Okay. Right, on to the Fletcher. So, one plague. Okay, and the second stone. Third stone, we're fine. And the, finally, falls in just at the end there. Okay, uh, the Fletcher leading the way. And finally, you pass a chamber in which the entire floor is covered with dead bodies. One survivor crawls from the pile, his features ravaged by plague. He reaches out to you but cannot find the strength to speak before passing away. Some of his, some of his possessions lie beside him. As a group, choose one option. Move on, you cannot risk further infection, turn the next chapter card, or take his items, draw three item cards, but you must roll for plague once and apply the result to all players. Um, no, do you know what? It's not worth the risk. We're just going to go for the final guy. This is it. You have reached the final challenge. One last obstacle stands between you and freedom. And it's the Plague Lord. Infection is power. It is you who plague me with your weakness. At the beginning of each round of combat, roll for Plague once and apply the result to all players. He's got a damage of three each time he hits us. So uh, this is going to be tricky. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so the Fletcher is going to be blocking some damage. The Shepherd uh, got a fist and we got a fist here. So the Fletcher does one of every type. So we can get rid of these three. Uh, uh, the Shepherd got a Might. We could re-roll that and we get to choose which one to keep. So we're going to keep this one because that's awesome. That takes out two of these. We're both blocked from the damage, but we do have to roll for Plague. And everyone gets two. So uh, the Fletcher has one there. One there. We take two damage. And two plague goes to the Shepherd. Guys, this is in the bag. We've got this thanks to the Cracked Axe and the Warped Cudgel. He says, uh, unfortunately, we missed. Um, everyone missed here. And there's nothing I can do about it. Um, so... Everyone takes three damage from the Plague Lord. I shouldn't have mocked him. Then we roll for Plague. We've got a two. So there's two over here to the Fletcher. Two over here, which gives us an additional level there, which is two damage. Now, just to remind you, if either character die, that's it. It's game over. The Shepherd is going to have to sit this one out. It's sad but true. She's going to have to heal up. And the Fletcher is going to have to defeat this with a fist. Come on, fist. We have double fists. Fist bumping all over the place. We defeat the Playlog. And we are enabled to exit the Dark Castle. And finally live out our lives. Uh, not for very long. Because, I mean, we are played. Chances are these guys are going to die shortly after. Or maybe just infect the entire countryside. Um, or maybe there's a cure.
who knows? Well, thank you for watching, guys. I've successfully escaped the Dark Castle uh, yet again. That is two out of four attempts I've managed to do. And uh, if you've enjoyed this video, then please check out Themeborn and their various different escape games. They have Escape the Dark Castle and the really exciting looking Escape the Dark Sector, which I'm yet to play, which is a space theme version of this with some more advanced kind of rules and ideas in there. Um, and if you would like to see me try to Escape the Dark Castle with a mixture of the three different expansion packs in the base game, let me know. I'll chuck all this stuff together and see what comes out of the mix. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Please uh, leave me comments below if you like this video. If I made any mistakes, definitely let me know. Uh, if there's any questions you have about this, please let me know. And you can find us on various different social medias. So follow us in all the areas you can find us, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. I've been the ever-excitable Adam. And until next time, stay safe and keep rolling.